Hi, my name is Janae Tires with Tires Essentials. And this is the soap that I made for this month's soap challenge. And basically I just used soap dough and created this little soap painting within the teacup for the Alice in Wonderland theme that I chose. I just wanna kind of walk you through the steps so you can see how um, I went about the process for making this soap. All right, so basically I just wanna show you how I went about doing this here. Um, this is a stencil that I cut out using my Cricut with some stencil um, sheets that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. And I'm just going to trace the inside of the shape with this little carving tool. And this carving tool I got from uh, Hobby Lobby too, but you can find these on Amazon. And I'm just doing like a light little might slide around on you but you could probably like fix it down with some tape or something but I just want to look, quickly show you this process here and I'm just getting the outline of the teapot so for the soap challenge it was a choice between Willy Wonka and the um, chocolate factory or Alice in Wonderland and I really, I really like Alice in Wonderland. I like all the imagery and all the creativeness and all the, the moodiness and the whole concept of the movie. And um, so I, I, cho I went to, I chose to go with that. And. I had another idea that I wanted to do, but my my soap bars are kind of small. So my soap bars, I want to say, are like three, um, maybe like three and a point seven five by by um, maybe like two and a half. Okay, all right. And I just I just kind of freehanded this little shape because I forgot to grab that this piece of the stencil all right so you can see here that I loosely have the outline of the stencil so now what I'm gonna do is kind of just dig into this a little deeper with the other end of this little tool and we're gonna inlay the design into this bar of soap so this bar smells delicious by the way <laughs> Um, it is scented with uh, blue raspberry fragrance oil from, I believe I just picked up some blue raspberry fragrance oil from Hobby Lobby. I have a Hobby Lobby like literally three minutes away from me here at the shop. So if you notice when I source a lot of things, um, Hobby Lobby, Hobby Lobby is one of the places I always go to because um, they're just so close. And when I just want to try something. You know, I can just get, pick up a little bit of something there. And then if I'm really into it, I'll find a supplier that's going to give me, you know, some good wholesale pricing when I order in larger quantities. So as you can see, I'm just kind of like carving into the bar. This bar was made, uh, I want to say like maybe like a week and a half ago, maybe. Um, and so it's so. It's soft. It's soft enough to do the carving. Um, it could stand to be a little softer. When I entered, when I, the bar that I entered, I made it mi like maybe like a few days after I made the soap. Um, but I wanted to go back and kind of show the technique after we went live for the reveal um, so people could could get a feel for what the process to create something like this would be. And um, and it was a lot of fun. I really liked. Oops, got a little crazy with it. Move it out. Um, and if you make any little mistakes like that, don't worry about it because um, I planed the whole bar after I finished putting in the flowers, and that it will clean up any little you know mistakes we make. All right, so I'm just going through, I'm trying to decide should I, eh, we'll just come all the way down with it. We'll just come all the way down with it. 
all the way to the edge. That's cool. And, you know, I'm not really thinking about, like, it's not important to, like, create this level inside. It's, it's You're not going to see the inside, so you can, you know, just pull away the inside of the shape so that you can um, have a depth to work with to inlay your uh, soap dough. And I just wanted to give credit here. Um, this is not my idea. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people working with soap dough. Um, but uh, I was inspired by uh, From Grace to You soaps. I looked up the technique on YouTube and um, I saw him creating this like Van Gogh looking uh, piece of artwork with his soap dough on his bar of soap. And I was like, that is beautiful. And dare I try it? <laughs> and dare I did. <laughs> Cause you know, it's a soap challenge, right? So if you're doing the soap challenge, you might as well go all the way. So, um, I watched this video and I, I probably watched this video like, I don't know, 10 times. And I was just amazed at how, um, he was able to take bits of soap dough and create these little columns of like different colors and then smash them almost looking like without a rhyme or a reason, you know, just kind of like randomly into this bar of soap, but it was all planned out. Like he knew exactly, I felt like he knew exactly what he was doing. So, you know, my first effort, I did not know exactly what I was doing, um, but I just wanted to have fun with it. And it was a lot of fun. And um, so seeing his work, you got to check that out um, from Grace to You on YouTube, you'll, you'll be able to find that video. And um, so initially when I was thinking about how to do the, my bar for the, for the, um, for the uh, soap challenge, I was like, I don't want to do this. Like I, I kind of know the vision that I want, but should I do it like, you know, like poured and then do some kind of swirl into the shape or should I do some kind of like create my own scraper or um even make my own silicone molds i was like how do i want to do this but um when i uh i'm a fan of b at sorcery soap and i was uh really looking into her uh looking at a lot of her videos on youtube and checking out her facebook group and you know i was like oh you know this is this is, seems to be like the medium i want to work with because uh, this is the way to do it. I mean, like you have, it's like with painting, you have this level of control with the brush, you know, and, you know, with your, um, like all of your little textures and uh, layering of color. And you don't get that kind of control with just free flowing cold process soap. And I wanted that level of control. Um, my background is in uh, like fine arts and, and design. Uh, 2D, I studied for a long time with drawing, painting, still lifes and things like that. So um, I like control. And when you know, when you pour soaps and everything like that, it's so fun to see how the, uh, how the swirls are gonna come out. But you, but when you're trying to get like a specific, um, result i feel like b soap dough is like the best it's like the answer to that need you know some some medium within soap making that you're going to get a level of control as an artist that you want with it so you can control you can build up colors textures layers um you know and and easily fix it or, you know, right there on the spot. And I was like, this is perfect. So 
I watched tons of her videos and I, I bought her book and um, I love her recipes. But when um, the soap challenge popped up, I wanted to get started and I didn't have all the ingredients I wanted to use from one of her recipes. So I just went ahead and used my own uh, recipe from my own soap. So it, real, real simple. I use coconut oil, um, olive oil. Uh, palm oil, uh, what else, uh, safflower oil, I think, uh, castor, and um, that's pretty much it, you know, real, real simple. So um, I went ahead and made these cute, let me show you, I went ahead and made these little containers of soap dough for myself, and I have some in like all these little container so I have like all the primary colors and uh, I just made a batch I think I just made my regular batch like for my four pound loaf of soap I was able to create one two three four five six seven eight nine ten uh, colors ten different colors of soap dough and that's all I needed for this project because like once you have the primary colors done uh, you can mix the other colors that you need. Uh, I mean, like if you have, let's say you have uh, red and then you have blue and you have white. And if you want to make, make some kind of nice little pastel purple like this, well, you just mix a little bit of the red soap dough, knead it, and then mix it with a little bit of the um, blue and maybe a bit of white and just add a little bit of the time until you get to the color that you want to get to. So, um, you know, that's super easy. So as I'm carving this, I'm just trying to get to something like a right angle. Um, but like I said, I'm not really concerned about this being like super straight in here because it doesn't matter. You're not gonna, you're not gonna see this part. And I'm just trying to get it deep enough to where when we plane it, we won't plane all the way down to this purple. All right. So this is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. Get this a little cleaner here. These little flaky flakes off. All right. So I'm just going to set this off the side. I'm going to keep some of these little crummy crumbs because in case we need to go back and fix something, we can do that. I'm keeping some um, clean wrap around so I can uh, not let any of my soap go dry out. So I'm just going to put that in there. Saving that. Beautiful. Okay. So we use our stencil. We carved it out with our little tools. Um, so this is my flower pattern that I'm basing my um, colors off of. So you notice it has those same kind of colors and texture and movement to it. So as I'm gathering my um, my colors, I've already kind of done some of them here and I'm just keeping them in this plastic so they stay moist while we're working. And um, I'll show you with the purple how I create these little clusters of colors. Basically, I wanna create clusters of colors. So this is my purple soap dough. Now this is not near as nice as the texture and quality that you would get if you bought straight from B at Sorcery Soap. Like her soap dough is like the premier texture and quality. This is just um thing that I put together my first time making soap dough because I wanted to do this for the challenge. And um so so as you can see, like like it's you know kind of sticky a little bit, and you know, I don't know. This is this green, this darker green I made with a little bit of black mixed in with this color which I think is Vibrance Green from Nurture Soap. And basically, I just work it in nice and soft and smooth. Then I'll roll it out. And you guys have to excuse my fingernails because, you know, I ain't got time to be painting my fingernails every day. So they're a little bit rough. But I want to jump in here and show you this, what I'm doing. So as you can see, it's kind of sticky. But that's okay. Like, this is totally abstract. I don't need to be perfect for this because... The imperfectness is part of the beauty, I think. So um, so I would just take 
you know, this one with a little bit of white. And I just already rolled that white out. That was from a, a, another color that I already put together. And then, so, you know, see, I'm just using my hand, the heat of my hands to kind of get this soft. And then I'm just going to roll it on the same table. Like I said, this, you know, you wouldn't do this if you're trying to do a pristine soap dough little character or plant or something or something beautiful but since it's just gonna all get muddied together anyway it doesn't really matter and so then i got this little purple so so, so see i'm just doing like the combination of these this dark green purple and white see that there so i'm just creating these little clusters with the soap dough so you can, we can do that again please ignore my fingernails it's like frightening but it is what it is all right so i'm gonna roll out this pretty purple and i think this is pow pow purple from uh nurture soap i think um and the white is just titanium dioxide and the, the soap is just made like my no normal cold process soap that i wrapped in plastic um covered in plastic and let it cure in plastic you if you if you go to b's soap dough facebook page and if you download her book or her ebook she offers it'll give you the whole process on making soap dough it's it's pretty straightforward pretty simple and a lot of fun um and super fun making all these colors that i can just grab whenever i want to and it made a ton my my four pound recipe that i normally make made a ton of soap dough so as you can see, I'm just going to break this up into little bits. Breaking this up into bits here. Creating these little, create, I'm sorry, I'm coming off the screen. Creating these little um, dots of color. And I think I wanna do a little bit more white and purple in this. I'm gonna do a little bit more white and purple because these greens are kind of taking over and I want some more white and purple to stand out in this. So I'm just gonna roll a little bit more of the white back and forth. So this technique is not something that I would do for, you know, a ton of soaps. You know, if you want to do something special for a gift or you just in the mood to be creative then I say give it a try I loved it it's a really, really kind of relaxing if you're sitting here you're sipping some tea watching some Netflix and you just want to keep your hands busy I think it's great it's a little bit too time consuming to create a whole line of soaps based off of this technique but um you know so I'm just gonna kind of like create a few more pockets of this color, and like I'm like I'm saying, this is just totally just wild. No, no really rhyme or reason. I'm just trying to get mixes of colors here. All right, so this is looking nice. All right. So I already did this with my other colors. I have like pink, uh, red and white and green. And I have a, or just a red and green. I have an orange, light green and green. I have a yellow over here. And then I have like another red, white and green. And these are the, I'm just gonna chop little pieces of these and lay them in here. This is gonna be super easy. Okay, so let's get started. I got them all prepped. I'm keeping them in shrink wrap as I work because I don't want them to dry out. And then this is a regular old paintbrush. And my first color. So in the corner, I'm gonna start what with like I'm thinking like these red, these I'm gonna start off with these reds and greens and whites in this corner. So I already have that mixed up over here in this little roll and I'll show you I already have that here and then what I kind of do is kind of shape it till I get like 
the shapes I want of the abstract kind of colors. And then I'm just going to start here in the corner and I'm just wetting it a little bit so that it adheres to this already made soap. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit here. Okay. And then once again, I'm just going to kind of shape it till I get some nice little abstract flower looking things. I have to make this a little bit skinny because I pick the side I want because I needed this to fit in the spout area. And then I'm just going to push it in and I'm going to try to jam this in as good as I can. Now, I want to push it in as good as I can here because, but remember, I'm going to plane it. Okay, so if you're not crazy about what you see on the top side, it doesn't even really matter. I mean, it gives you a general idea, but when you plane it, it might change. But I want to push this in as good as I can. Okay, so we'll see how we have those colors there. And then I might do one more little piece. Okay, so see this little piece that I cut off here? And what I'm going to do is just going to shape it. See if there's any side that we prefer. Oh, I like this one. Don't know why. <laughs> but I just like it. And then since I'm taking these pieces, I don't want it to look PC. So then I kind of, let's see. I might use this little... I don't know. I think it's a fondant, fondant tool to kind of blend the seam together because I really don't want to see the seam of the colors as they come together. If that makes any sense. And then I'm just pushing, pushing, pushing. And the wetness of the soap is just making it stick. Beautiful. So you can see how we already have like this, this flower pattern. I'm going to push it into the top there we already we're already making this cool abstract flower pattern okay and then next um i'm gonna mix it up and we're gonna go um down a little bit and i'm thinking i want to do now maybe some of the purple green and whites because this little garden has like these little sections of colors that pop so i'm gonna pull out the little roll of purple and green and white that you just saw me make oops I hit the camera okay and I'm gonna just take a little piece I'm gonna cut it off across across the way and I like the way that's looking right there and then don't forget we're gonna add a little bit of water to it so that it sticks okay I'm trying not to do too much because then it'll just slide all around like that <laughs> but it, it'll work itself out. It'll dry out. And then I just push it together. And then once again, I'm kind of holding it because I don't want to slide as I kind of mash these together to blend it into each other. Okay. There we go. That's pretty. So see how we're working from the red and the green into the purples. So I'm going to do another one of these. Another one of the purples here. And then I like the variation we're getting here. And what we'll do is we're going to do a little bit more of the water. And I'm just going to put a little bit more. And we're going to kind of like pinch that in getting the shapes we want, blending. So be at Sorcery Soap, I don't know if you've checked out her Facebook channel, but she, or her Facebook page and her uh, YouTube channel and her Instagram and her everything. Um, she's working on these amazing stencils. She's put together all these books. Like I can't, I have like so many soap dough ideas I want to do. Um, but I was so 
grateful to be a, 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 a part of the soap challenge because it really kind of pushes your creativity to the next level and uh, makes you try new things. So now I like that. I'm going to go here and I'm going to change. I'm going to switch to um, this this uh, red, pink, and green, and white piece here. And once again, we're just going to take a little a cross hatch or cross cut of this. I'm going to see what that looks like. Or do we prefer this one? I don't know. I don't like this one. And then I'm thinking we'll just kind of squeeze that in here. And I'm for me, I'm just following the pattern of this um, my my source image here kind of like with the pink it goes from the reds into the pinks and the purples are here and oranges so i'm just following this but you really can do whatever you want with this kind of design so i'm just trying to push it in keeping the flat side up because that will have the the colors that we want it we want to see all the colors because if you if you laid it in the other way you would get like these um, stripes. And I don't really want a lot of stripes. I want, I want, um, you know, like pops of color, right? Not stripes of color. That's not what I'm really going for here. And I'm trying to blend it so you don't see the seams of the colors coming together. So that's pretty. And then, Oh, let's do one more. I want to do another one. I want to really showcase all the different colors of this garden. But yeah, so check out um, Sorcery Soap's um, website. And if you don't want to make your own soap dough, you can buy hers. She has it already pre-made. She has awesome stencils. So if you don't want to create your own stencils, or if you don't have a Cricut like I have, um, just, she's got them, she's already done the hard work. Like, just check out her website, check out her books. She pretty much paved the way. There was really not much <laughs> you have to do, but play and have fun. All right, so we got the pinks in there. I like that. And then, let's see, my next one would be, I think I want to do the orange. I want to work in the orange. And we will, where's my, okay, so here's the orange color. Beep, beep, beep. I probably don't have to wait it this month, but I'm just having fun. All right, so same again, same thing again. Here's my little tube that I smashed and rolled together. And I'm cutting off a little piece like that so you can see it. And I'm going to pick the side. I, I really want some vibrant orange in there. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it this way. Let's do it this way. I really want the orange to like pop off here. So I'm working it in. And you can see, I mean, I am kind of trying to keep it kind of level. I don't know if you can see that. But don't worry about it too much because, like I said, we're going to plane this. And, you know, it'll get more level that way. So I'm just kind of like trying to blend this in so you can't see the seam. Don't want to see no seams. Okay. And then if you can see, I used, while we are using different colors, like we're going from pink, we're going from red, we're going from purple. But the thing that's tying everything together is the green and the white. The green and the white are the same uh, hue or shade, I guess, whatever, as in all the other colors. The only thing that I'm changing is the, the, the like, I don't know, primary color, I guess. The, the greens and the whites are the serving as the neutrals. So...